let's go back a while. Uh, you're, you're making your way to becoming a professional athlete. At what point do you realize that after sports, uh, you're going to be doing something that could potentially be bigger on you, on your life uh, financially, um, with what you could potentially do with protecting your, your funds? Well, it, it really wasn't about protecting my train of thought was that, first of all, you have to understand where I come from and my upbringing. I'm the eighth of 10 kids and I grew up poorer than poor. Poor people had more than we did as a, a family. And um, when you grow up in being the eighth of 10 kids, raised by a single parent in a house that's less, that's less than 700 square feet, outdoor plumbing, no running hot water. You appreciate the little things that you have and uh, always strive to do better. Using your, using, using your past to advance you to the future, which means I'll never forget where I come from, uh, but I never want to go back there. Mm -hmm. So I'm always striving to make myself better. When I left high school, I made a pact with myself that the only time that I'm gonna go back home is to visit, which I do a lot. I'm not gonna move back home. I'm gonna always go back home to visit. So if that's the case, I gotta do something that's bigger than sports. So what I decided to do, to what I decided to teach myself and learn as much as I can in my four years in college was to use that as a platform to launch me into my next life. Um, not saying that it was gonna be a sports life. Um, I planned my freshman year to be out of professional sports by the time I was 32 and doing something in business. I didn't know what, but I didn't wanna spend the rest of my life uh, chasing a ball or having somebody chase me, <laughs> which is fun when you're young, but um, I had bigger, s sports in my world ranked third or fourth on the important things that I wanted to do in my life. Uh, didn't know anything about business, took a few business classes in uh, college, uh, took, took a few classes to know how to somewhat keep an eye on my finances and so forth and so on. So I use college to, play, to catapult me into the professional sports world and use the professional sports world to, catap to catapult me into the business world. Um, one thing that I've always learned and always paid attention to is that whatever you do in business, you gotta always, you gotta always be smart when it comes to business, but always have to surround yourself with people that are just as smart as you. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what, that was my game plan out of uh, college. I say this, we have a saying around my office, <laughs> is that we may not be the sharpest knives in the drawer, but we have enough knowledge to cut you when we want. That's correct. So, so, um, so um, that's how I lived my life. Not trying to be, not trying to be nobody except Bo Jackson. It's awesome. So okay, so you, your upbringing, the challenges that you faced, did that, was that a chip on the shoulder that it didn't matter whether it was sports or business or whatever, that that was going to be a motivator for whatever you're going to accomplish? My motivation in life was always to be the best at no matter what I did. Um, if I had goals to be the dumbest person in class, I wouldn't have <laughs> let nobody take that goal away from me. <laughs> but luckily I didn't. Um, 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 my biggest fear in life is failure. Um, and everybody's biggest fear should be that. From the standpoint that um, the only way the only way the world is going to continue to rotate is somebody got to be successful at something. Yeah. And um, I want to be a part of that group. Where did that come from? 
that just come from growing up and seeing people doing things that I wasn't able to do. Seeing people achieve things that I wasn't able to achieve as, as a kid. Um, um, having that fear of failing and then having to go back home. Uh, never wanted that because as a kid I was labeled to be that kid to end up either in the cemetery or the prison by the time I was 21 years old. And um, I used that a little as fuel for my fire to be successful. Um, and it's just something that's always stuck with me. And I never want to give those people, those naysayers, I never want to give them, I never want to give them the satisfaction of saying, I told you so. He's right back here and he's doing nothing. He's failed at everything he has set out for and so forth and so on. So, so that's kind of, that's kind of the fuel for my fire. I had to be successful at whatever I did because um, my mentor, my idol was my mom. And she's probably, she was a super, super woman. I never idolized athletes or movie stars or anything like that. I idolized my mom because if she can raise 10 kids and all 10 kids have stayed out of trouble and hold down two jobs, living in a house that's smaller than 700 square feet, if she can do that by herself, this is a piece of cake. Well, so that's interesting. So that's that's probably where you got that's that similar where I got hunger my from. Because she she does the same thing. One hundred one hundred percent from from my mother and my grandfather, and um, and I say that my grandfather never bought anything food wise except flour. Caught everything he, else. That he he raised his own meats ground his own cornmeal, uh, had his own sweetener from sugar cane. Uh, he did everything himself. The only thing that he ever bought was flour That's to crazy. make biscuits. And 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 I but and I'm fortunate enough to have those genes, have some of those genes. So clearly, I mean that that same fuel, because you said yes. if you if you had if you had the hunger to succeed at being the worst in class, mm -hmm. you, you would have, oh, yes, right? So yes. that, that passion's there. So at some point, does the light come on when you're young? Before sports even no, came into your life it, and you knew that it was there. My light, my light came on sitting on the back steps off of my back porch, watching little Cessna airplanes land and land at the municipal airport that was about a mile from my house. But between the airport and my house was a cow pasture and woods, pine trees. And on the other side of that pine tree was a landing strip for the little municipal, municipal airport. And I would sit there on my steps and watch those planes take off and land. And these planes, they weren't expensive planes. Some of them were, were kit planes, but in my mind as a kid, I thought those people that flew those planes were rich people, were like the Bill Gates, mm -hmm. the Jeff Bezos, and so forth and so on. And um, not knowing that in this day and age, hell, I can go buy a fleet of those if I wanted to. But, um, but as a kid, that was where I wanted to get to. I wanted to get to where I could have a life like those people. Does your mom and, tell and you that, that that's possible at the um, time? Um, um, I told my mom that I was either going to go to the military to learn how to fly planes or I was going to go to college. And she said, well, you better go sign up down at the, uh, down at the military recruiting office because I don't have the funds to send you to college. And things worked out. Things worked out 10 years later that I was able to get a 
full ride to go to college. She didn't have to pay. At what point do you understand that that's a possibility? From for, Forget about passion on sports or not. I didn't. I just wanted to compete in sports because the cool kids were on the football team, the baseball team, and I was hanging out with the idiot group that stayed in trouble. And I went home and asked, can I play football or baseball? She said, no. And I asked why. And you never ask a black woman, a mother of 10, why? When she tells you something, you just accept her answer. She popped me in the mouth. <laughs> and then she told me, because you don't make good enough grades to be on anybody's team. Hmm. And uh, she said, um, you show me that you can be a good student and stop making D's and yeah. F's, I'll think about letting you play baseball or I'll let you play football because I didn't, cause I didn't go out for football until I was in the ninth grade. Um, same with baseball. Um, but it took me um, getting in the classroom and taking my studies serious before she would ever allow me to do something like that. And um, I wanted to be like the players that was on the team that was good players. Mm -hmm. So I learned and I watched and I learned and I watched. And I'm the type of person I don't like to lose at anything. And uh, one thing led to another three years later. I got colleges from all over the country want to pay for me to come to their school and play football and they're going to give me a free education. You can't beat it. Do you think, do you think in, today's, in today's world where a, a Bo Jackson at that point had to be discovered, a Bo Jackson today um, is probably all over the internet so the re recruiting life has changed. Yes. Do you think it's uh, that college is almost taken for granted and those that have the ability to perhaps be successful in professional sports and make some money um, don't think about the long term the way that you were at that age? Well, um, 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 life has changed. The athlete has changed. The universities has changed. Everything has changed. And um, we old as we're known now as old timers, we sit up and say, if I was playing in this day and age, making the funds that these kids just are making, there's no limit at the things that we could do. But um, it's not our time. We've had our time. So, so the thing that I do is that I just sit back and look Actually, to, to be honest with you, I don't even do that, meaning that I'm, I'm too busy to sit down and watch a baseball game or football game uh, or basketball game, and I barely go to games. When I'm home, I don't want to watch what I used to do for a living. So um, in terms, I am a fan. I love the sport, but I just don't watch it. That's like you going home and turn on the TV and watch Ted Koppel. <laughs> get you a big bowl of popcorn, <laughs> get you a beer, sit down and watch somebody do interviews. Yeah, sure. So so, so I find things to do um, in the little spare time that I have that excites me. And that's anything outside of baseball, football, basketball, anything outside of sports. So sports just happened to be the outlet that you were sports able to apply Sports was my stepping. To. Sports was my platform to get me to where I am now. Can you ever step out of that, out of your shoes? And I mean, for someone who desires to be in those shoes, it, it's, it's weird, I do it right? all the time. I do it all the time. And um, but and the thing that I say to the thing that I say to, especially young people is that don't take your education for granted. Uh, let your brain become a sponge and absorb as much as you can because you're going to need it down the road. You're going to need it down the road. For some odd reason, um, this generation thinks that, well, I'm going to go to high school, 
I'm going to go to college, have four fun years, and I'm going to get out and I'm going to get a big job where I'm sitting behind a desk and wear a suit and an air-conditioned office and do nothing. And I'm going to make a boatload of money. It's not going to happen. Yeah. That's not going to happen. I can firmly say this generation got it. This generation. And this is from all of It's a little lazy. Yeah. It's a little lazy. I doubt if you could give someone a rotary telephone and tell them to call somebody on it, they wouldn't know how to do it. Would it? They wouldn't know how to do it. Do you, so I, I find this entire topic fascinating. So um, obviously in the business that we are in, mm -hmm. we have to find ways to motivate, um, call it the more entitled or everybody gets a trophy type um, uh, person in the work environment. That's your um, generation. <laughs> it's the generation well, be, before me. I'm, but, but every generation probably says it about the previous generation, right? And, it, and it's going to get worse. Oh yeah, but and, and you and look at uh, Aaron Rodgers during um, during uh, preseason comes out and says it was very simple. Uh, the play is up. The receivers need to follow the play. They don't hustle. So it's not it's not just limited to one type of business. No. It's, it's everything. It's everything. Is that an opportunity? It's it's everything. This young generation feels like they're more entitled. They've had a cell phone since elementary school. They've had a computer since they were in diapers. Um, everybody turns 16, they get an expensive car. Yeah, right. They don't understand the value of a dollar. They don't understand the value of being responsible and being punctual, being on time. They don't understand the dress code. They don't understand this. They don't understand a lot. and and. And and it's really not their fault. You got to look at their parents. What the heck are you doing in order to train your kids, to teach your kids, to be successful once they leave your home to go out on their own? Right. And 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 it's sad. The only thing that I can do is take care of my own. I have three, 32, 30, and 28. The oldest is getting married next month. All college graduates, all got jobs on their own, and I'm praying that they all get off the payroll. <laughs> Period. So, 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 never had any problems with them. They've never been in trouble. And put it to you like this: I, I told them at an early age, if I don't do it, you can't do it. Yeah. I don't care how old you get, how much money you make how big the house you live in. If I don't do it, you don't do it. And that's just the way I raise my kids. Do you see do you see similarities to you as a 10-year-old watching planes? Did you ever see that in your own children? Has environments still allowed that? Because if your grandfather had it, your mother had it, you have it, yes. are you seeing it continue? Yes, yes, so yes. So the motivation is going to be there in some folks in the they generation. They strive to be successful. Everybody looked at my kids when they were young. Oh, your two boys are going to be ball players just like you. They're going to be successful in sports just like you. My kids play organized sports for one year and said, Psh, Dad, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't push them in it. I didn't push them in sports, but I was a slave driver when it came to them getting their education. You don't make good grades. Cell phone, computer, out of your room, your bedroom door, off the hinges. You have no privileges in this house anymore. You know, you can't go to your friends, your friends can't come over, period. Until you bring your grade up, it's almost like you're in prison. So the name of this house now is called Shawshank. It's great. So, so, so that's what I did. And mom and dad, word is law around the house. There is no, there is no, there, there is no getting around the rules. There is, there, there is no shortcuts there. So, like I said, I don't, I really don't care if you play sports or not. It doesn't bother me one bit. The thing that I do care about is you getting an education. Because one day you have to, one day I'm gonna put you out of my house 
and you got to have the know, the wherewithal to go out and make a living for yourself. So it sounds like you applied same, same you have this blueprint on whatever you treat in life, but you applied I, it to parenting. I have given, I have given them the tools and everything they need to be whatever they want to be in life. Yeah. And if you take those tools and go put them in a drawer and forget about them, you're going to be left beside the highway. That's great. That's just the way it is. Have you have you been able to? I mean, you're 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 still driven. Every and we'll get into Every your day. business in a second. Do you ever get to sit back and and relax, or is that is that a permanent stress that's behind you that's saying never fail the never fail mentality? The, can you ever say, "Wow, I, I actually have had a lot of success. I've done some really cool things." Oh my! Re oh, but I can turn this off like a light switch. But then when I go home to just to relax, my relaxation is all centered around number one, doing things with my family. Number two, outdoors, whether it's fishing, hunting, golfing, my old cars, and so forth and so on. I make sure that I have the best equipment. When I go out, this morning I went down to my man cave to regrip a golf shaft that I glued together last night um, uh, because I'm at war with my with my golf equipment. You know how they say it's never the arrow, yeah. it's the in Indian. Yeah. And for me, sometimes it is the arrow. <laughs> and I'm just trying to make it better. So I'm experimenting. I'm unhooking the smoke detector downstairs because I'm soldering and got smoke going downstairs and so forth and so on. So I, so I am always striving to make things better if I'm a part of it. Does that still come back? That's all stuff learned in childhood? That's stuff that's... It's in you. You got to be the best at what you do. So now you, you get out of professional sports. You, you knew you were going to get out anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and now you're, you're ready to go into business. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is the driver then? Because at that point, you get to pick what you're going to be passionate about, right? Yes, but at the time, I didn't know what I was passionate about. Um, I know one thing that I, I have always been a closet foodie. I've always been a closet foodie. Um, I've always loved to cook. I'm the cook in my house. I'm the cook at my friend's house when I go. I'm the cook at my buddy's house. I'm the cook at the hunting lodge when we go hunting and so forth and so on. So that's something that I love doing. And um, out, outside of sports, I'm experimenting with everything. I got the latest. I got the sous vide machine. I got the indoor smokeless grill. I got four or five grills at my house, two smokers. I got the green egg, I got it all. <laughs> I got it all. So some people collect, some people collect sports cards. Some people collect sports cards. I collect grills and smokers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it's something that I enjoy doing. I can get away from being Bo Jackson. Yeah. I can get away from being Bo Jackson, the athlete, Bo Jackson, the businessman, once I leave this building. Once I leave this building, I leave this building here. I never take it home. And I did the same thing in the sports world. Once I left that baseball stadium or that football stadium, I left that at that destination. Never take it home with me. And I never bring my home to the office. As as it fallen into the category of a celebrity. Is that sometimes tough to walk away from? No. I don't walk away from work and have people hound me. Not for not for me. Um, I've already I have always kept both separate, which which means if I'm with my family, I'm not Bo Jackson. I'm out with my buddies doing it. I'm not Bo Jackson. I'm just one of the guys. Yeah. We're out golfing. I'm just another golfer that sucks. <laughs> We're out hunting. I'm just another bird hunter. Yeah. We're out fishing. I'm just another fisherman. I'm not that guy. I'll be that guy next week at the sports memorabilia show. But right now, no. He doesn't exist. He isn't home. Office is closed. 
what what created this maturity? Because at some point, like who, who's giving you this advice on, on how, how to navigate a complex life? Learned it on my own. Trial, trial and error. Um, even when I was in college, even when I was in college, I'd go out there on the field with my teammates and we would perform on Saturday. And 95% of the time we would win. My teammates that Saturday night, they want to go out and party. You come back to the football dorm, go to room 221, I'm in the dorm room. I'm in the dorm, pair of gym shorts and a t-shirt. My door open facing the baseball field because they have the lights on in the stadium, cleaning the stadium, and that light is reverberating back across campus into my dorm room. I leave my 11, 30, 12 o'clock, I'm in my dorm room. And, 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 and not that I was antisocial, but I knew where I wanted to go. I knew what I needed to do to get to where I wanted to be at. And by me going out partying, hanging out with my teammates, drinking and have a good time, that's okay if that's what you like doing. But I wasn't the type of person that liked to wake up with a hangover the next morning. Uh, I wasn't, and I knew, I, I had teammates that were party animals, and I knew if they got out and had too much fun and said something or did something to somebody that would start a fight, Guess what? I have to help my teammates, and 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 come next morning or Monday morning. Guess whose name's going to be at the top of the newspaper? It's not going to be that. It's not going to be the guy that's on the practice squad that started the fight. Of course, it's going to be my name because I'm supposed to be one of the leaders on the team and one of, one of the more popular guys on the team. So that's what the newspapers are gonna write about. Bo Jackson involved yeah. in a ballroom and a barroom brawl and so forth and so on. And I couldn't do that to my mother. I couldn't embarrass her on, uh, because I learned this from the sports information director when I was at Auburn. He said, Bo, you can go out there on that field and you can run for 500 yards on Saturday, score eight touchdowns. And the news writers are going to write things to make it look like you are Superman. And if you go out and do something stupid like trying to help your teammates in a fight and you didn't start it, you just trying to break it up and the headlines hit Bo Jackson in a brawl, those same writers that was calling you Superman on Sunday is going to rip you to shreds on Monday. And, and, and I listened to that. I listened to the fact that in some instances you, you will be looked at as just another dumb jock. And I didn't want that for myself. So my roommate and I, Tommy A.G., made it a pact. We promised each other that we were going to make each other go to class for my freshman years. If I don't feel like going, the only reason I won't get out of bed and go to class is because I've had some type of surgery. The only reason he wouldn't get out of bed to go to class, he had some type of surgery. And besides that, I'd have to wake him up by any means necessary. He woke me up by any means necessary. Yanking the covers and throwing a cup of cold water on you. That's what we did. We're both college graduates. Our kids are all our kids are graduated college, and um, and things are going good for us. Do you feel like? I mean, okay. So you you have all this incredible background uh, up into even you get into sports. It's almost like it was it was a curse that you were as good as you work because. But Bo Jackson, the CEO, that, that nobody knows outside the bit, let, let's say you never play sports, you would have mm -hmm. still been just as successful. So it's almost like a curse that, that happens as, as a, that other personality because it's so, you're so powerful behind it. Well, I tell you what, if there was no Bo Jackson, the sports guy, there would have been, there would have been a, a captain or sergeant or a lieutenant 
or General Jackson in the military, pilot, period. No doubt about it. So do you feel like, I mean, the world looks at you different than what the reality is because the reality is it, it sports, sports wasn't really meant to be your outlet. Your outlet was to be a leader in something. I accidentally stumble into sports. Yeah. Um, like I said, as a child, in our neighborhood where we grew up, we were 75, 80% relatives, the whole neighborhood. And um, we didn't have computers, no cell phone, three channels on most TVs, uh, no cable, no internet. So we had to make our own fun. We were the community baseball, community softball, and we were the community pickup football team. And uh, I would always play with with friends and siblings and relatives that were older than me. Mm -hmm. Because they were always, the big kids were always one or two players short, not filling in. And I always played on their level. So sports to me was easy. Sports to me was easy. So when I got to play with kids my own age, the parents would sit up in the stand and yell, get that man off the field with our kids. And so, and I heard that all the way through high school. And uh, it didn't bother me. I thought it was funny. I thought it was uh, funny, but um, the thing about it, it didn't matter what path I took. I had already taken on the mentality that I was gonna be damn good at it mm -hmm. as a child when I was six, seven years old. Not knowing what that would have been, but. Yeah, yeah it's, fa it's fascinating, I mean, so when, when the Bo Knows campaign comes out, I, because, because of your maturity at that point, are you, are you still looking at that as a blessing or are you, are you just like, it's, no. it's a part of the story? Everything that happened after high school was a blessing for me. Because if you look at it, like the elderly people in the neighborhood said, I wasn't supposed to be there. Everything's a blessing. Um, I didn't take anything for granted. I didn't take my, my four years at Auburn for granted. I didn't take my uh, time in the NFL or, or in Major League Baseball for granted. I cherished every day that I was able to do what I do because like I said, um, I use that as a platform to get me to the next level. And um, that's all that you can do. That's all that, that you can do. Stay in your lane and make sure that you do what you're supposed to. So now, at, so at this point in your life, you, you've, you're, you're doing well in food distribution. Mm -hmm. Because you have the ability to separate Bo, Bo Jackson family and Bo Jackson business, is at this point when, when you're using your likeliness to market a brand, is that just you putting that in a bucket and saying this is this is this well, is part of it, part of the story? My name and my face is my brand. The thing that I do now, and I just don't go around and just put my name and my face on anything. I got the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I can put my, as I tell people, I got the opportunity to put my name on a lot of crap. And I don't. I don't need the money that bad. Got three kids, I need the money, but I don't need it that bad. For a little bit longer. Uh, I got a 28 year old daughter, so yeah, <laughs> I, I, I might as well, I should change that. I do need the money. <laughs> but um, but um, the thing behind that, the thing behind that is that if my name is on a product out there, you can bet the farm that it's a good product. There is a saying in the food world, celebrity brands fail drastically. Mm -hmm. Almost 95, 98% of the time, celebrity brands fail drastically. And the majority of that, those failures got to do with the, the celebrities just put their name on something and depend on somebody else to go out and sell it and you sit back and wait on a check to come every month. Yeah. And they fail where I decide to do what the other people forgot to do or didn't want to do, 
is that I'm out there beating the pavement every day on a plane going here at food shows, doing my own cuttings, doing my own, doing my own presentations, um, shaking hands and kissing babies. It's almost like being a politician. And 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 uh, there, there there there's also a saying out there is that no one can sell your product better than you. Sure. The first thing that I'm going to do is go out and find a manufacturer that can produce the quality product that's that has a quality enough for me to put my name with, and put my name behind it. So yes, I want my name, I want my face, to get your attention in the supermarket or in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. But I want the quality of that product to make you come back. Did you ever go back and forth with, you, you know, the, you're only going to stamp your name on things that have tremendous value back to whoever you're selling it to. Did you ever debate internally whether you even want to put Bo on the product, that the product just could take no. off on its own? Um, um, no, because if that was the case, it wouldn't be my brand if my name and face wasn't on it. Yeah, It's just something that I do that a lot of other people have failed to do, and that is that I'm going to get out and I'm going to do as much marketing. I'm going to do as much as I can to make sure that my product, that my brand name is out there on a positive note. So now you've created a passion behind this. You've, you've launched multiple products that fall under the, the umbrella. What, what's the dream now with, with business, with, with this line, with your investment holdings? What, what do you dream of today? To grow it. Just to grow my business. To grow my business and one day, hopefully, just like every other business owner do, every other CEO do, Grow your business and hope one day retire from it and let your kids run it. I'm gone. I'm I'm gone. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my bows and arrows, my fishing rods, get on my boat, go here, get in my truck, or get in my truck, hook my boat up to it, and I'm gone. So so one day that will happen. But right now, I'm still in the process of making sure that the roots of this tree that I'm trying to grow is in the ground solid. When you're playing sports, you say, I'm, I'm done by 32. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you approach business ideas or business models the same way? That you, do you have a time period where mentally you're like, I got to make it, I got to hustle until this point? I really wouldn't call it hustling because I've been hustling all my life. It, this is an everyday thing for me. Yeah. So to you, it's hustling. If you had the schedule that I have, you'd probably be at home sleep right now. <laughs> you'd probably be at home sleep right now. So, um, so me, this is normal for me. I know, I know most of the people at damn near every TSA checkpoint in the country. Oh, I see you back through here again. Yes, I am. They know when I come through, the only thing's gonna ding on me is my watch. And it's a cheap watch that don't have a yeah, glass in nice. it. Broke it last week and didn't know it until I was <laughs> on the plane. $26 watch, my favorite watch. And I broke the glass out of it. But um, 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 I go, I go through the airport and the TSA people know me. Not because, oh, you're back here again. Where are you going this time? What you got in the cooler? Because they know I got some f frozen product right. or something in the uh, cooler and so forth and so on. So I'm on the road a lot. I'm on the road a lot. So as part of this, the small time that we spend together, I, it seems like part of this is, is that, that that want for someone to, to praise you, not for just being Bo Jackson, but to say, that's a, that's a damn good piece of meat, or you're, you're an all, amazing businessman. That's all I want them to say. I'll give you an example. A couple of days ago, um, I went down, took my products, 
and I but and I cook my steak, my seafood, and my burgers for a dozen people at a big distribution company down south. Everybody that I cooked for, first of all, they were surprised that I knew how to cook. And I went there and cooked. And everything that I cooked, everybody was like, wow, that's good. I left there, had enough time to drive 12 miles to get to a local restaurant that wanted to look at my products. The owner came in, cooked for them. Same thing happened with them. The owner sat there and ate his lunch from the samples that I cooked, which was steak. Um, a ribeye, a New York, some burgers, my seafood sliders, cooked them right there. The people back in the kitchen tried them. And I told them that I, had, that I hadn't been in that restaurant since 1981, my first time back in that restaurant. Mm -hmm. And when I went in, I went in and sat at a table and the waitress said, you know what's weird? And I said, what? She said, every time Charles Barkley comes in here, that's exactly where he sits. <laughs> so, 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 so it's, 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 people know me, which is nice, but it doesn't matter to me if they know me or not. Sometimes I like it most when they don't because that means that I don't have to talk about my old job yeah. or what I used to do. Um, I'm in the food business now. If talking about sports and reminiscing uh, about sports is going to get my products on your shelves or in your rests, in your restaurant, on your menu, then let's talk about sports. Yeah, right. But at the end of the day, the only thing that I care about like every restaurant owner, every supermarket uh, meat guy or the supermarket general manager, the only thing that matters at the end of the day that we're putting a good quality product out there for the end user. That's all that matters. And that product yeah. is clear in the shelves. Is it? Is it amazing now w w would you have liked to tell a younger version of yourself that this was the life that you would end up with or is it is it amazing to reflect that e sports is part of your life what your mom taught you what your grandfather taught you that all of this is your formula that led you to be in the food business is it, is it ever surreal to just think about that pathway well i always think about that pathway i got but i know that my grandfather gave me a big piece of him and my mother gave me a big piece of her. And to have both of those, have both of those ingredients in this mixture of whatever you want to call it, uh, makes me the person that I am. So, and, and, and it makes me want to succeed. I guess that's all is part of their genetic makeup and their genes and I'm lucky to have a piece of that. What equals happiness for you now? What equals happiness to me? Yeah. I, I, I would just say never giving up success at anything, period. Seems like you've taken that pathway. Okay, that's the only pathway to take. Yeah, I think, I think it's, I, I certainly appreciate it. I, I think, I think celebrities are, there's a perception that's created by the public or the media mm -hmm. that creates the, that's the perceived DNA of a human being. And it's nice to be able to see what's underneath that. Well, well I think some people take that celebrity status a little too far. Um, um, me? I just told people, I said, look, I said, I said, if you're my age or older, don't you dare say sir to me. I said, if you do, we're going to fight. <laughs> and I haven't lost a fight since my sister beat me up. <laughs> and, and, but, and they laugh because they think every celebrity got to have a handle, Mr. Jackson, 
thank you, sir, no, sir. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, look, let me tell you something. I said, I'm a nappy head kid from right across town back over there. I said, you talk to me just like you would talk to your brother, your best friend, your buddy, and so forth and so on. I said, now that's the only way that we're going to get along. Yeah. And and but and people un understand that I don't mind getting my hands dirty. When I say let's go fishing, I don't want you to put my bait on the hook. I don't want you to take my fish out the hook. I don't want you to clean my fish because I'm gonna do a better job than you anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna clean your fish. And you're gonna pay me for it afterwards. So 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 it's things like that. Um, I hang out with some of my celebrity buddies every now and then. But my everyday guys that I hang out with, retired from the gas company, <laughs> working night shift at a mill, retired cops. Yeah. It's everyday people. They're people. Everyday people. Car salesmen, go hunting, body shop managers at the local car dealership. It's, 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 but it's stuff like that. People ask me, I just took pictures this morning. I just took pictures this morning at 6.30 of my 2003 Dodge pickup that I'm getting ready to trade in. <laughs> um, and I'm going to Iowa to do that with the buddy that I promised. Um, I went to Iowa for some business. And um, the guy let us, the general manager, let me and my crew take one of his cars just for the day. And I liked it so much, I said, whenever I get ready to, whenever I get ready to, when, whenever I get ready to trade in my car, which is probably going to be within the next year, I'm going to do it with you. That's great. And I did. And I'm going to do a second car with him right now. So, so, so when I say, um, I'm not bragging when I say I'm down to earth. That's just how I am. That's just how I was raised. But my mother always said, is, is that you put your pants on just like everybody else. You bleed red blood just like everybody else. You're no better than nobody else. Treat people like you want to be treated. Sounds like everybody can use a mentor like your mom. There you go. She was a great lady. Great lady. Well, I appreciate the time. This All was right. fantastic. So Thank you.